Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. Right, so uh, a little bit of a correction about the first war of the season we had and uh, we actually won it on time. Now, at the time when I recorded the video, uh, it looked like there's absolutely no chance of us winning. Uh, we had a bit left to clear, but we were down like four deaths, I believe. It was like nine to four five deaths or and uh, everybody in our alliance had completely kind of given up on this war as is and then uh, just before the war finished somebody checked the score and was like hey holy bleep check this out uh, and yeah they they somehow at the very end managed to uh, get themselves KO'd like four times and uh, ended up losing on time to us which is uh, extremely unsurprising definitely Kind of an undeserved win one of a million type of scenario but uh quite happy with that so you know well played war i would i would say well played war but it wasn't it wasn't for the ease that one of the sides realistically um i'm sure that they are not happy with that war and nor are we really giving away nine deaths uh it's, it's not great but we are definitely happy for the fact that despite all of that we won Right, now let's focus on the next war, and this is against DS VG. And uh, I'm going to be using Rintra, Kingpin, and Penny Parker. And uh, I'll definitely have some interesting fights. Few that I was slightly worried about. It isn't the biggest or the longest war for me, but I was actually very satisfied with the way this war went because. Um, well, number one, it was nice and convenient and uh, concise. I could do my fights in one go, but I actually felt like I played quite well. In fact, I believe, well, I'm going to reveal that reason at the end, I suppose, but uh, you guys are going to see. Anyway, so we're boosting up as normal, obviously. And uh, here uh, I'm going to be using Kingpin against the Tactic Defender. So I'm not entirely sure how crazy the power gain is going to be. I'm going to put on this indestructible boost. Hopefully it's going to last us for a couple of fights and it will. And uh, now we can see it's steady build of fury, long distance relationship, heal block, insult to injury, which is the node that kind of worried me the most, which means that I will not be able to parry for the most of the fight whilst using Kingpin. Each debuff on me reduces my defensive ability accuracy by 15%. So unless I basically get the overpower buff and I have exactly well get it exactly a debuffs at that point I can parry but as long as I have debuffs on me my parry will fail and obviously Magneto you can't really block bait heavy attack so I fully went for intercept in this one and it, it's working out relatively well you can see that we're getting the passive fury from rugging off the long distance relationship debuffs as well he is gaining some reasonable amount of power. I don't think it's unmanageable by any means, but, you know, still rather safe than sorry. And here we can see that Kingpin is uh, perfectly nice and healthy at his yellow bar there and another intercept. And uh, relatively nice, smooth, clear fight there. Uh, I do think maybe I should have brought a Nick Fury for this one, but either way, uh, I was given basically a choice between Nick Fury and Kingpin, and I like Kingpin a lot. And besides, uh, this next Immortal Abomination, I can either use Penny Parker, because obviously she's poison immune, or I can use Kingpin and just benefit from the fact that he's a shrug off god and uh, nuke him down. Now the problem here is him gaining 50% attack for every debuff that he has. And obviously he starts with 3, so I do not want to get hit. If he does hit me, he's going to be hitting me very hard. And those poisons could be doing quite significant damage too. But obviously Kingpin's level 1 will work relatively well to reduce that damage. And here we can see that because I was able to hit his block, get some weaknesses on me, enter overpower relatively quickly. Uh, yeah, that Immortal Abomination is uh, melting down quite fast. And my Kingpin is again at a perfect, nice, shiny, polished yellow bar. And there's nothing to worry. And next fight. I'm going to be using Grinter against Cersei. A teammate of mine also is going to give me one of Odin's pre-fights just so I can win the rich get richer battle that I can that I checked out my boost. It turns out I still have that indestructible three boost, uh, which isn't a big deal because I'm going to be applying another one uh, for the mini boss fight anyways. But, you know, 
still nice. We managed to squeeze in three fights with one, I suppose. And here now I'm going to be using Rintra against Cersei on the Rich Get Richer. And um, I have one buff. She's never going to get any buffs. And, you know, for, at times I will have two. So sweet. We basically just need to get her in the corner. So here, there we go. And now we're going to root ourselves. Sweet. Again, perfect, nice, healthy yellow bar. Tiny and polished 26 raptors. <laughs> actually crit with my Rintra, so that's a nice 140 some k crit and that bit is over and now this fight that uh, i'm brought in penny for and this fight is a bit scary it is and it is to do with obviously wolverine fnx and hazard shift incinerate poison and stun immunity we were thinking whether to use warlock and I'm sure you can use Warlock for this one because obviously Warlock's infection will always let you power, help you power control. Uh, but I was kind of worried about Weapon X fight in the sense that if I can fight Weapon X freely, I always do relatively well because I have fought him a lot in Battlegrounds. And that's the reason why I brought in Penny. I had never particularly tested this matchup, to be honest. I knew it theoretically should work. But the real reason is just because of that incinerate and poison immunity. Because with Penny, I can be as aggressive as I need to be and benefit from the fact that Wolverine Weapon X will have that aggressive AI. I will not need to get it down to cooldown. I will not need to avoid the um, incinerate phase uh, whenever it appears. And yeah, with Penny, I can just keep hitting basically until he's down. I don't need to take any pauses. And that's what I felt would be, you know, just kind of... Uh, well, I felt more confident with that strategy. And it will kind of pay off. And this is going to be yet another one of those uh, invulnerability boost times. Because if you do get hit against Weapon X, it hurts. <laughs> it hurts a lot. Um, so, now with Penny, I'm just going to start by finding an opening. Then I got a nice intercept. Get another intercept, get him up to 18 charges, perfect, which means I can bait out special attack. Just need to wait out of his unstoppable. And here I was trying to force him to throw heavy attack because of his aggressive AI. He normally does. This time he didn't, so I just went for a regular good old intercept. Now I just straight up go for a level one, even though it wasn't perfectly aligned with power bars. Uh, I just wanted to get, you know, a bit more space for me. And now again, we're basically just gonna be. Super aggressive, rely on intercepts the entire way. Uh, we are not going to let him go out of his berserk state. So he's going to remain unblockable the entire time. He's going to try heal the entire time. Uh, but that is pretty much perfect for me because aggressive AI is much more predictable and it's easier to intercept. And here we can see that I got to my level 2 with 18 charges. And that is all she wrote. And this is another fight with a perfect yellow bar. So... Uh, this was one of those wars where every single fight pretty much went about as well as it could have. It didn't even take a, any damage on my block, as we can see here, no damage taken. And yeah, um, I finished every single fight with every champion that I used with a perfect shiny 100% health. So uh, no potions wasted and, uh, you know, kind of feels quite good. And uh, Munash's uh, Weapon X mini boss flapped. And uh, the end result is that uh, we won the war against the SVG. The SVG is obviously also very, very capable alliance, Masters level alliance without a doubt, and also has a ton of, you know, great players and awesome guys in there Munash and J Will and a whole bunch of other lads, including. So it's always a pleasure to fight against them. And this time, this time we managed to clean up our KO count, you know, um, three deaths is not um, the best, but it's definitely much, much, much better than our opening war. And, uh, you know, once we do get used to the new tactics and new interactions, I'm sure we can try and uh, do as well, if not better, kind of like persistently. So... Because of that first war, and uh, now this, we are actually 2-0 for a season. And uh, 
it's much 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 better of an opening than i thought we had in the first season so, sorry in the well first war of the video so yeah 2-0 not bad at all we cleaned up our ko's as well so hopefully uh the rest of the season goes well how has the season started for you guys are you guys getting you know used to the new defensive tactic and all that let me know in the comment section and meanwhile i'm gonna catch you guys later bye Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information about